we've talked a lot about linear regression, quadratic regression, cubic regression, and even a little bit about quartic regression. So now we're going to talk about a more general form called the power regression. So you can see the power function is here. It says y equals a times x raised to the b. So this could be something similar to what we've done before. This could look like 2x squared or x cubed or something along those lines. You can also take the form of radicals. Um, we could also have things that look like this, 2x to the 1 half, which is really 2 times the square root of x. Or say x to the 1 third, which is really the cube root of x. Or it can even be more random things like um, 5x to the 1.3. So it's more flexible in that you're, you don't have to specify which type of exponent you want and it can figure that out. It's less flexible in that there's no constant. Um, so that's something we're going to have to deal with a little bit, the fact that there's no constant. Okay, That's just not there. There's no plus C that allows us to shift the, the data up or down. Um, also, because of the way it's set up, you cannot have a zero term. Um, in other words, you should never put zero in your L1. Um, if there's one in the data, either just shift everything up one. In other words, if it's 0, 1, 2, 3, just call it 1, 2, 3, 4 instead. Or just if there's lots of data points, you can just ignore that one. So let me show you an example of how this would work in the calculator. I've got a data set already plugged in. And let's go and make sure our plot is on. So turn plot 1 on and then do zoom stat, which is zoom 9. Okay, so I get something like this. So this looks like it may have somewhat of a radical curve. It looks a little bit like square root of x. So let's try the power regression. Let's go to stat, go to calc, and we'll go down all the way till we see power regression, which is a. So power regression. Okay, so then we put vars, y vars, this will graph it for us. Enter. And we get this format. Okay, and if you look at the r squared, it's pretty good. 0.94, that's a nice regression. Um, pretty well, doing a pretty good job of explaining the data. So let's look at the graph now and see if it seems to fit it pretty well. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good fit does a pretty nice job. So again, if we look, we would have 274.26 times x raised to the 0.025. That's an exponent we couldn't get any other way except by using the power regression. So I just wanted to give you one example of this for your reference, be able to know how to use it. Um, basically, here's what I would recommend. If it looks like it's radical, in other words, if it looks like it has a shape something like this, then the power regression is going to be a good thing to try. Or if it if squared and cubed are both working and maybe you need to do something in between, you can try the power regression because maybe 2.5 is what it really needs to look like. Um, the main thing you need to know again is that you need to use data that's going to start somewhere around the origin because since we don't have a plus C, if we've got something starting up here, it's going to really throw it off using the power regression. Um, so you want to use something that starts near the origin, but you're going to have to keep zero out of your uh, data. So actually, let me explain what I did here. Um, the data I pulled from the first year that I used for L1 was 1982. Now normally, I might just call my first year zero. In other words, I would have said 1982 is year zero and just done everything as years after 1982. But since zero is going to cause an error if I put one in there, I instead decided to use years after 1980. So that made 1982 the year 2, 1986 the year 6, and so on. So that's something else you can do if you're trying to make sure it uh, works out a little better for you.